Hello and welcome everyone. This is InventRight co-founder Andrew Krause. And we have Mr. Stephen Key, an InventRight co-founder on the line. Stephen, how you doing? Thank you, Andrew. I'm doing fine. I'm, with, um, I'm on my cell phone. There's candlelight because the power's out. There you go. Oh, is this a romantic InventRight webinar? <laughs> I said, oh, yes. <laughs> so Stephen's up in the in the mountains, the Nevada side of Lake Tahoe, and they have this giant storm ripping through there. His all his power is out, and one of his cell phones is down, and he's on a cell phone with 47% left, and he's a trooper, man. I didn't think you're going to show up. Well, we'll see how long the power. Let's see okay. how long this phone lasts. Yeah, well, Alex and David and myself can can keep things going, so no, no worries. You might lose Stephen at some point, but we'll still be. <coughs> Um, then we got Coach uh, Alex Reed on the line. How you doing, Alex? I'm doing great. Thank good. you. Good, good. You sound great. Sound fantastic. Somebody said on a webinar recently you sounded like some movie star. I forget who that was. Oh, uh, uh, Brichette, whatever her name is. I forget. Yeah, Susan uh, Brichette, I think it right. is. Yeah. So we got movie yeah. star and event right coach <laughs> Alex Reed, and we got. Uh, Mr. David Fedewa, who's also a coach. Fedewa, sorry, David. I always mess that up. Right. Yeah. Uh, it was a very good week. I had a lot of uh, students starting to get interest from companies, so it's uh, very exciting. Very, very cool. Good, good. All right, so guys, we got 60 minutes here, and, and all of us just looked. We got 34 slides, and we figured, you know, two minutes a slide, and we're toast, you know? So... <laughs> The, let's talk about the, the purpose of this webinar. Common problems, concerns, and worries of inventors. This is not a webinar to go in great length into these things. We want a one wham bam, you know, webinar which just really hit all a lot of the very common concerns that people have. And we're going to give the short, brief, punchy answer. And you can find more information, you know, in the website, in the other webinars. But we thought it would really be great for the new people, the old people, just to go through it. I think with 34 slides, if we did two minutes a slide, I don't know if we're going to have time for Q&A, but if you do have questions, type them into the questions box. I'll we'll ask them in the order that, that they show up there. All right. So again, common problems, concerns, and worries. We're going to show the worry, and then we're going to show, we're going to talk about what the, what the solution is really, really quick and punchy. All right. And we, uh, Alex, David, Steve, and myself, let's interrupt each other if one of us is going on too long because we've got a lot to cover here. Um, is my idea different enough? So uh, I'll talk about the marketing perspective, Steve. You can talk about the patent perspective. I, I think slight variations on existing products are rocking ideas. Now, completely new stuff is great also, but if a company sees that there's eight barbecue spatulas that have a certain feature, like let's say a bottle cap opener, and you have a slight variation or improvement to that, they know that feature sells well and you've got an improvement. That's a plus, not a negative. Your idea doesn't need to be completely new. Steven, do you want to hit it from a patent perspective? Yeah, real quick. Most companies technically really don't care if you have a patent or not. So a slight variation is going to be fine. Products go in and out of the market so, so quickly. You file your provisional patent application, and you'll be just fine. Slight modifications, as Andrew said, you can get patents on those, but that's a whole other conversation, and you probably don't even need it. Okay. And if there is a different pro if there's a product you're concerned about, you have to take a look at the patent if there is a patent even. And most of the time you can go right around it, but in that case you'd have to look at the claims. But I would say 95% of the time that's not a problem, not a big issue. Um do I need a patent on my idea? Steven? No, absolutely not. Most products that are on the shelf do not have any patent protection. Most companies want to have some type of protection, but the reality is because of products go in and out so quick, it's not really necessary. Having a patent pinning that perceived ownership is really all you need. Some industries are a little bit different, but that's a pretty rare situation. So to be conservative, cover yourself, file a provisional patent application for 65 bucks. It creates the perceived ownership that Stephen was talking about. If there's interest from a company, we're going to help you get the company to pay for the patent if at all possible. And if not, you got a deal on the table. Hopefully money's coming in really soon. But almost all the time in most product categories, you're going to want to file a provisional patent. So you don't need a, you don't need a patent. You need a provisional patent. And then later, if they want to file a patent, great. But if, they're if they want to license it and pay you royalties without a patent, would you guys be fine with that? Probably would, right? Mm -hmm. 
And the the first product that I licensed uh, was not patentable. Um, so they, you know, I, I filed a PPA, but um, we both knew that it wasn't patentable. So it's it's, it's not a must-have to get a licensing deal. Case in point. Absolutely. Thank you, David. Excellent. Uh, so is your PPA good enough? Yes, it is good enough. It's good enough to have the perceived protection, shop it around, see if companies are interested. Go from there. Will a company steal my idea? I, I'll weigh in on this a little bit. I, I think it could happen. I think it's rare. And whenever I make this statement, it makes it pretty clear to the students. In 12 years, students in over 40 countries, it's never happened to one of our students. Is it going to happen one day? Absolutely it will one day. But I think the reason why it's never happened to any of our students is you're conducting yourself professionally. You're not like that wacky inventor they talked to a year ago. You're saying smart things when you're on the phone. You don't have to be polished, but you're saying smart things. You're asking the questions we teach you. You know how to reply to emails, and you got a nice presentation. And when you show them your provisional, you've gone through that PPA checklist, it looks good. The fact that you're conducting yourself professionally for that small 1% or 2% of companies that might consider it are not going to want to mess with you because you're not like that wacky inventor that they might do that to that they talked to a year ago. Anybody else want to weigh on that? Okay, great. I don't, in today's world, because of open, open innovation and uh -huh. the ideas, it, it, it just doesn't work. Uh, with social media, it's easy to file for a provisional patent application. Why bother? It's just bad business. And I don't think the word stealing is really correct. I think the word is more work around. Uh -huh. If you give them a reason to work around your idea, you know, by not being reasonable, by not be understanding the language, by being a wacky inventor, yeah, they might work around it by finding some variation, but I think that is even um, uh, not very common. Excellent. Thank you, Stephen. Do I need a prototype? Well, Stephen and I always talk about this. You're not selling your prototype. A lot of people have that big misperception. You're selling the benefits of your idea. Uh, if you need to do a video, do you need some sort of prototype? Yeah, you need something, but quite often you can fake it. If you shoot the video, you cut the angles, you cut it just before it breaks and falls apart, you shoot it 10 times, the one time it works, that's the, the, the video you use. So if you want to do a video, you're probably going to need some sort of prototype in some way but it doesn't need to work all the time or at all. You can fake it by you shoot it, you cut it, and then you cut it from a different angle and you're talking about the product and they're like, oh, that's how it works. But it doesn't even really work. Um, now, also, I think w the very important thing, point I want to make here is you have to decide what is a prototype? De let's define what a prototype is. A prototype could be something that, let's say you have a new pasta sieve and you tell a graphic designer on Fiverr for five or 10 bucks to Photoshop it and add something to it, that could be your prototype. The company can see it and go, oh yeah, we can do that. That could be your prototype. Now you could go down and cannibalize a product at the store and change it up, take a picture of it. That could be your prototype. Or maybe it looks a little rough, you get somebody to Photoshop that. So I think we always really need to kind of think very actively, what is a prototype? It's whatever it takes to sell the idea. And it's not as much as a lot of people think they need. One thing I do want to add, there's a good question, when do you need a prototype? And real quick, there's probably a couple couple different reasons. If, if you do get interest from a company and they want to see a proof of concept, then you might have to produce a prototype. Number two, if you're writing your provisional patent application and you want to discover different workarounds or variations, a prototype might be a a good way to discover that. Mm -hmm. right? So those are really the only couple reasons that I would say to build a prototype. I don't think you have to build one at the very beginning. I think Andrew's right. I think getting interest first and if they ask for a prototype, then consider building one. But some of you like to do it if it's something you can do quickly and easily or if it's necessary. You do it. It's really a case-by-case -case basis, right, Alex and David? It's like yeah, I think I think it's a case-by-case. Um, and proving the concept, I, sometimes it just makes you feel a little better that you know you've seen it work. And you can learn so much by uh, working, getting your hands on a, a prototype and making it. It's, it's fun. Yeah, that was the case for you, Alex, with your product, right? I mean, I, I uh -huh. saw you working on that product. That, that really helped you kind of figure things out, playing around with it. Yeah. But you, how much money did you spend on that? That wasn't exactly expensive. It was a few things. You oh, gosh, no. It was probably under $100. Yeah. 